What's up Make Pop Music? It's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and Visual and we are back with another video and this week I am super excited because we are going to be covering a topic that not only have you guys asked for for a lot but this is going to cover one of the most explosive songs we've seen in recent history and yes I'm talking about Olivia Rodrigo's new song Driver's License. If you've been around for the past week, week and a half, you have definitely heard it. So we got a ton of requests about that song and we've just gotten a ton of requests over the past several weeks anyway on how to make a pop ballad, so now felt like the perfect time. So in this video today, we're gonna cover how to produce and write a pop ballad similar to her song Driver's License, but also similar to artists such as like Jeremy Zucker and Chelsea Cutler doing this kind of style, J.P. Sachs, there's an artist Clinton Kane. So if you really wanted to know how to make those kind of acoustic driven indie ballads, but they still have some pop elements and they still have some production elements. This is gonna be the video for you because we're gonna dive in and actually create a song from start to finish with you watching. So if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. That helps us out a ton. Let us know what videos you do wanna see in the comments down below. And if you wanna subscribe, we are so close to 100,000 subscribers. We are really, really excited. And if you like this video, we're putting these out every Friday. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for more because we try to give you guys as much content on here as possible. But without further ado, let's actually jump in the DAW and let's look at what we can do to give ourselves a pop ballad. All right, now we're actually in the DAW. Let's go ahead and let's start out, um, you know, what the process of this is going to be. So I've got the tempo set to 110, just kind of a nice little ballad. I know driver's license a little bit faster. I know some of the like JP Sachs and Lewis Capaldi stuff is a little bit slower. So this felt like a nice little middle ground. I don't want anything too, too crazy. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a piano track because that is going to be the main element going throughout this entire song. So I'm going to use Keyscape. Um, I think Keyscape is by far like the most versatile and the most dynamic software keyboard. Um, you know, I've tried a bunch of others. I've tried ones from Contact. I've tried ones from East West. And to me, this just really kind of goes above and beyond. Um, so I'm going to select their C7 Softest Grand Piano. And uh, let's go ahead and get a metronome working. Something like that feels like that could work really well. I wasn't recording, I'll just record it off camera real quick, but I definitely want something that's gonna have that kind of like pedaling note at the top. That's something that you'll hear a lot in these kind of ballads, the. It just kind of really holds that sustain there. Um, it's not really doing anything crazy. So I am gonna go ahead and get that tracked up and then we will start kind of adding elements on top. I wanna keep the keyboards and pianos pretty simple because this whole thing is gonna be kind of straightforward. Okay, so I went ahead and tracked it up and the only real thing I did different from there was I just also layered that kind of pedaling note up an octave and um, just really made sure that the velocity and dynamics were good. And then I just let it go one time around with that octave that we kind of demonstrated. And then I actually went ahead and started layering the lower note and octave below. So we have this. And then it goes into this. So now we've got that main keyboard there. I think that that's pretty much good to go. We'll probably continue that for most of the song. Um, we might swap it up, but I know that I do want to add some extra layers here and there. So for now, I'm going to leave it there and I kind of want to go ahead and start adding some kind of little pad just to get a little bit of ambience going. I don't want this to be super thick, um, but I also don't want it to just be straight up piano because that, you know, I, there would be no point in doing a video on how to produce a ballad if we were literally just going to do piano and vocal. So I've got that piano from Keyscape. I think that I want to find some kind of pad in here. So I'm going to sort. And I know that the Pro 6, the Prophet 6, has some really, really solid pads. So let's head over there and see what we can find. All right, so I think I'm going to go with this warm pad right here. So I'm going to select that and then I'm just going to layer over something. I don't want to do anything too crazy. I don't even really want to use the full chords. I just want to add like some nice little bit of counter melody. Now I'm 
just gonna go ahead and start processing that up. All right, so let's go ahead and take a listen. So I actually just took it up an octave and instead of going to that octave higher, the F higher, I actually just took it to this C right here. Just to give me a little bit more melodic movement. So I'm feeling pretty good with those two main elements. That's definitely what I'm gonna want to carry most of the song, but I think I actually wanna tie in some guitar. So I'm gonna go ahead and track an acoustic guitar and I'll probably track a little bit of electric guitar while I'm at it. So I am gonna stop the video real quick, record that, and then I'll bring that back in so we can see what we came up with. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do for a guitar is I wanted to go ahead and track like a harmonic that was gonna be the same as that pedaling note on the piano. So we have... And I actually tracked this down three semitones because my guitar was just in standard tuning and it was a lot easier to hit that harmonic and the guitar line that I'm about to show you. And then so what I did was I just tracked that in the normal tuning and then actually transposed it up three. So it kind of gives me like this cool little crushed sound. And then I went ahead and EQ'd it a little bit. I cut out the lows and kind of just carved out these highs. Turn the metronome off. And then I'm gonna do a bunch more processing to it. All right, I'm also gonna go ahead and add this FG73 preamp and a 116 compressor, just to give us a little bit more bite and character. Cool, that's feeling really cool to me. It almost has like this toy box effect, um, which I kind of like. So let's keep processing. All right, I'm just gonna throw on Pro L2 so we can actually start limiting some of these transients off because I don't need them. That's feeling really good to me. Let's go ahead and keep going. Now I'm gonna use an envelope shaper to kind of lengthen up that sustain and cut off that attack. And that's really gonna help it blend with those pads a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna keep messing with this. All right, so I just went ahead and added a long reverb, a short reverb, and some extra EQ. So now after all the extra reverbs and EQs, we have something like this. And that's pretty much it for that. And then we also have this acoustic guitar right here that I'll show you guys. All right, so we have this, which again, I tracked in a little bit lower key and then transposed it up three semitones. And then I'm just gonna process that like crazy right now. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is filter out some of these lows and boost some of these highs. Make it a little bit less muddy and boomy. Then I went ahead and added the FG73 and the FG116 and the Pro L2 like I did with the harmonic guitar, just to go ahead and, uh, you know, kind of compress it. I really want this super smushed because I'm about to distort it like crazy. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the next two things that I added were RC20, so some retro color just to give me some vibe. And then I'm adding Kickstart to actually go ahead and sidechain that. I really just want it super crushed. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and actually add some saturation with Camel Crusher. So now with the saturation, we've got something like this. Now I just need to filter that out and uh, tighten that up a little bit so it doesn't take up the whole frequency range. All right, so now we have this kind of EQ on it. I've also added Duo to kind of give it some stereo spread. And what I plan on doing is kind of opening this up as the song kind of progresses. That way when we get to the chorus, I can still use that same element so I can open it up to feel a lot more thick and important because I don't wanna have to add a million different things. So now we've got both of these that were added. Just giving me a nice little bit of counter movement and then let's go ahead and check this guitar. So I went ahead and tracked this on my Strat. And I know that there's this really, really crazy uh, preset in Guitar Rig, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use that real quick. So there's this uh, preset that I found forever ago called Epic Texture on Guitar Rig. It's really cool. It'll basically turn your guitar into like this really granular, um, really gnarly sounding pad that's gonna have like a bunch of high end shimmer and it's kind of got these cool reverses. So when I added that on the guitar, it gave me this.
which is really, really nice. And then I'm just gonna do some extra processing, put a doubler on it to widen it up, and then uh, put some EQ on it. So now with all that done, let's go ahead and check what we have with those new guitars and these keys. That's feeling pretty good to me, nice and spacey, not really doing anything too crazy. I do wanna go ahead and layer some claps, so I'm actually gonna stop the recording again, and I'm gonna go ahead and track my own claps because I can get more dynamics that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll circle back. Okay, so I tracked a bunch of claps. What I did was I kinda of did the same pattern five or six times, and then layered them all up and panned them all out. So once I comp them down, I have this. And then all I'm gonna do is process that, so I definitely wanna make that a little bit more lo-fi and filtered. I definitely don't want that that loud and transient in the mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and process this and I'll show you guys what I do. All right, so I did a bunch of processing, kind of similar to what we did to the acoustic guitar. So I added retro color for some just kind of vibe, I added a couple different kind of reverbs and EQs just to go ahead and filter that out. And then I added kickstart to kind of side pump that again, so. And I tuned it down three semitones. So now in the mix we have this and it kind of sits a lot better and it's just doing something nice and subtle. Kind of something that you'll hear Jeremy Zucker do a lot in his songs and I know that these kind of like um, really repetitive wide claps definitely come in on driver's license. So if you have the opportunity, definitely track your own claps because doing a little loop like this, it can have a lot more life than just going in, you know, programming the claps like that. So we're gonna do that real quick and then let's go ahead and move on. I think we need a little bit of extra spice. So I wanna go ahead and add some kind of like bass that will give us some movement. There's kind of like this bass that comes in on driver's license in the verse that just happens a couple times that like kind of woom, 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 kind of comes in. So we're gonna do something like that with Trillion and there is, I've used it before, I think it's Yeah, let's do that. So we've got Cool, let's try that. All right, so I'm gonna track that up and then I'll probably print it out so I can shorten it because it sounds like all of these are at a different speed because that's just the way that their LFO is set up. So I'm just gonna track that out, print it, and then show you guys what we have. All right, so now we have that. All I did was just added a Dimension D to widen it a little bit and then added this filter to cut off some of the top end. And I shortened them up to where the uh, kind of wubby swell comes in exactly where I want on the beat. So what I had to do is just basically, uh, you know, find it and then you can double click uh, the one button on Cubase and you can just time align it by dragging it. So I just did that and that kind of did everything that I needed to do for that. So I'm feeling pretty good about this for the verse. I think we need to start kind of building up what would be a chorus. Cause this is starting to have plenty. All right, so I went ahead and structured this out. So the way that we're gonna do this for this tutorial's purpose is right here, we have a quick little intro of those harmonics. Then this will go into a verse. This verse will kind of pick up right here when the guitar comes in. And then we'll have that bass come in. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. And then I'm thinking this will be the chorus right here, but I definitely wanna add some kind of big bass to come in, I think. And then all I really need to do past that is um, go ahead and add some extra uh, elements for the chorus and then for this verse, because then we're gonna go into the second verse right over here. So I know we're gonna start adding some extra drums and some extra basses and stuff like that. So while I've got everything kind of working in conjunction, let's go ahead and uh, figure out what kind of bass we can add. So I'm gonna probably go to Serum just because it's super easy to work and it's super easy to show y'all. 
and then I'll probably just choose like some kind of wide respace. And for at least this chorus, I'll probably shorten that up. So we can go to like this grease lightning bass. And then we can just kind of shorten that up. So let's see. Let's do this. Let's try that. Yeah, let's get some kind of bass track there so it feels like a chorus. All right, so I got that kind of low bass pad track through here. So we have it for this, uh, what's gonna be like a chorus. And then it's also going to continue here when we have that second verse come back in. And then I think what we're gonna do is We'll see once drums are coming in, actually. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let's go ahead and start adding some drums. So I'm just gonna add a kick real quick. All right, so I definitely wanna differentiate verse two from verse one with adding a kick. That's again, something that you're gonna hear in Driver's License, something that you'll hear in a lot of the kind of Jeremy Zucker songs um, and even in the JP Sax songs. So we have a kick right here, just a really simple kind of soft subby kick. And then I also went ahead and layered this kind of like roomier kick. And I filter it out and then I kind of bring it in. So with that kind of layering on each other, it sounds something like. And then we're gonna go into something like this. Now I think we can go ahead and add that bigger bass. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably just duplicate this and lengthen up the release. All right, so again, I just added that bass. It's just thicker and louder. It just doesn't have that decay. It's just a straight kind of bass pad um, with really no extra dynamics. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add a couple snares and claps um, on the two and on the four, just to give us a little bit more movement in this chorus. Okay, so we just layered a couple different snares and claps on the two and four. So now we have something like this for the second chorus. And I think I do wanna layer up those claps that we originally organically tracked. And I think that I am gonna go ahead and just do that with some program claps. Um, so I'm just gonna use one of the good drum kits in Groove Agent and I'll just program it. All right, now we have these new claps right here. Just to give us a little bit more movement and a little bit more beef. And then I kind of want to add some kind of like shaker or hi-hat element. So I'm going to find something real quick for that. And then I'll loop you guys back in. Okay, so I found this little top loop that is in a different tempo and it kind of has a different feel, but uh, it sounds like this. So what I did was I put kickstart on it to kind of swell it. Then I added Camel Crusher and Doubler to give it some extra crunch and width. Filtered it out with some EQ, and then I actually put a transgate on it to make sure that it's falling in the right time. So we actually put 1 16th uh, triplet. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. I am gonna go ahead and layer up a couple different synths in this chorus and maybe even in the second verse to give us some more dimension. So I'll go ahead and do that and then just kind of recap what we're doing. So I added this synth that's gonna go through the verse and through the chorus. It's just this little uh, pad. It's just the Late Night Drives pad from our Spectrum pack and Serum. And then we also have this little filler pad right here that comes in at the second half of the verse and then through the second chorus. And that's just a pad called Tides. It's also in our Spectrum pack. So um, super simple pads, but they add a nice little bit of variation for the second verse and the second chorus. And you know what? I actually think I'm gonna take off that bass right now for that second verse. So we'll have something like this. And then it'll come back in right here for the second half of the verse. And then we'll go into that second chorus.
and I'm feeling pretty good about that structure. I'm gonna go ahead and layer up some rises and hits, and then we'll talk about the top line and get some vocals in there. I just added a few little risers and hits everywhere. They're kind of organic. They're all from our Sounds of Life pack because I didn't want anything too electronic. I kind of wanted to keep that kind of ambient natural vibe. So they're all basically Foley and found sound that we've processed. And so we have like this reverse clap. Then we just have like some of these little rise. And then going into this little, looks like second verse. Going along to that 16th uh, triplet note kind of vibe. And then going into the second chorus, we have a couple more extra down hits. And uh, that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and let's start writing the lyrics. All right, so I got a little notepad up. Typically, I'll either do this on my phone or on a Google Doc, but our internet's actually been out for a day now. Somebody's coming to fix it later today, but I didn't want that to derail our video. Um, so we can just go ahead and start writing it on here. So for lyrics for this song, I definitely want them to kind of stay decently personal, not to me, but feeling personal to the listener. Um, and these kind of ballads really do well when they revolve around like imagery or very, very specific storytelling instead of just kind of general emotion. So I think that in the first verse, we should definitely tie in something like that. So I'll go ahead and turn this down so we can start working on melody and lyrics. And uh, let's just jump in. <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, I already have a melody that I like. I kind of want to do... So let's do... Uh, let's make it like very picturesque. So let's do Remember That Night Back in Brooklyn. Remember That Night Back in Brooklyn. Uh, let's do like... Okay, so let's set the narrative. I think the story for this should be basically about you kind of... Um, see someone from across the bar in my case i'd be seeing a woman but um i'm gonna try to make it as like gender neutral and non-specific as possible that way anybody can kind of sing along and relate so let's do remember that night back in brooklyn let's do across the bar caught me looking and this is a good example of how like you don't have to say your lyrics exactly how you would speak a sentence. Remember, the lyrics are a form of poetry. You can get away with not having, you know, super specific kind of set sentences. So, remember that night back in Brooklyn, across the bar, caught me looking, da 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 da. I was caught by surprise when you looked in my eyes and came over so let's do um remember that night back in brooklyn across the bar caught me looking i was caught by surprise when you looked in my eyes and came over so remember that night back in brooklyn across the bar caught me looking i was caught by surprise when you looked in my eyes and came over cool i actually really fuck with that a lot um it feels very ballady and let's keep that going uh, I was caught by surprise when you looked in my eyes and came over. All right, let's do we drank till the bar kicked us both out. You offered to come back to my house. Let's do we stayed up till we saw the sun slowly creep to the bar kicked us both out. You offered to come back to my house. We stayed up till we watched the sun slowly creep. So we've got the rhyme happening on the end of these for these uh, kind of first phrases. And then we have an internal rhyme in here. We stayed up till we watched the sun slowly creep. And I kind of want this last rhyme right here to rhyme with came over. Um, so let's just keep setting the imagery and let's paint the time was October. So we drained to the bar, kicked us both out. You offered to come back to my house. We stayed up till we watched the sun slowly creep was October. Yeah, I like that. All right, so let's go ahead and start messing with this pre-chorus. I kind of want the melody and the, uh, you know, kind of intensity to elevate, especially since we have these basses coming in. So let's do... All right, 
So let's, um, we set the start of the relationship. I kind of want the chorus to be about the kind of end of the relationship or the negative part. So let's go ahead and start bridging that gap in the narrative. So let's do, now it's been seven months. I can feel you fading fat. Now it's been seven months I can feel. It's been seven months and I can feel you fading fast. Let's do that. Alright, let's keep this going. Let's do But I keep noticing. But I keep noticing that we've been noticing that we've been both on different tracks. So let's do, now it's been seven months and I can feel you fading fast. But I keep noticing that we've been both on different tracks. But da, 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 da. All right, let's do. But I just don't know where it all went so wrong. Can you tell me? All right, so let's do. Now it's been seven months and I can feel you fading fast. But I keep noticing that we've been both on different tracks. But I just don't know where it all went so wrong. Can you tell me? All right, let's do that. Um, now let's move to the chorus. All right, so a little confession. When I was coming up with this video idea, I actually already had an idea for this chorus. This is kind of where the chord progression even started from. All right, so what I had in the shower was, can we take back what was never spoken? All right, let's do that. Take back what was never spoken. Can we fix what started out as broken? I just wanna make this work but it's clear I was never quite enough. But I can't seem to give you. All right, let's do. So we're gonna have this kind of go twice, but we're gonna change a couple of the words. So we have, can we take back what was never spoken? Can we fix what started out as broken? And then we're gonna uh, transition into falsetto. And I just wanna make this work, but it's clear I was never quite enough. But I can't seem to give you up, can we? Let's do take back all the lost emotion. Can we try again, but be more open? And then let's do, I just want to make this work, but it's clear I was never quite enough. Or maybe we just never were in love. And there's a whole narrative kind of painted up into that chorus. This is basically about a relationship that kind of started out nice and blossoming and felt really fun and inviting and bright. And then, um, you know, months into it, you just realize that like y'all have drifted apart. The relationship was really never going to work from the start. Um, it was fun while it lasted, but this is, this is definitely not something that either one of you can kind of sustain. So for the sake of time in this video, I don't want this video to literally be an hour long. We're not going to go ahead and work on a second verse. I'll just copy that over so you can hear the dynamic. But um, now that we've got it written, I'm going to go ahead and track some vocals and I'll check back in with you in just a minute. All right, so I went ahead and tracked vocals. So we've got a lead vocal. And then the key to these ballads is really, I noticed in Driver's License from Olivia Rodrigo, and I noticed in a lot of the Jeremy Zucker songs, they're not super dependent on a bunch of stacks and choirs and layers and stuff like that. I suppose that when we did the second chorus, we could have layered it up a little bit and done some extra harmonies, but I just wanted everything to feel low key and kind of, you know, intimate. So I just tracked a main vocal for the whole thing. We have a couple extra little delay throws here that I'll highlight, and then we have a vocoder and some extra reverb. So let's go ahead and listen while I kind of run down what we have going on. So the main vocal was tracked on the Slate ML1, so I am gonna process it first with Virtual Mix Rack, and uh, we'll take a listen while you kind of look at all of the settings. Remember that night back in Brooklyn Across the bar caught me looking I was caught by so, so we just got like a channel here. We do have a classic tubes over here um, with, I believe we used a 47 on this. And then channels, uh, channels, so it kind of sounds like it's coming through a console. FG73 Pre, um, FGN to do some EQ stuff on the lows and the low mids and then just a couple different compressors. So we've got some light compression with an 1176 blue stripe and some uh, compression with a 2A. Then we're gonna go into auto-tune, not really doing anything too, too crazy, and just set to kind of a mode. And then we're just DSing, doing some EQ where it kind of notches out these room modes at like a couple dB a piece. 
And then we've got Soothe, which is like my new secret sauce for vocals. It really like tightens up that, that top end. So I use the vocal warmer preset to give myself some more um, full low mids, but they're not boomy just because that's what we're gonna need for the song. And then a little bit of fresh air to add some brightness back in just a little bit, and then some extra EQ and stuff like that. So nothing too, too crazy, kind of similar to what we always do on the channel, just some different EQ moves. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Remember that night back in Brooklyn, across the bar, caught me looking, I was and then we're sending this to the parallel widening, which is a roll in dimension D, a short reverb, which is gonna be verb suite on like a short vocal room, the slap back delay, which is gonna be a repeater on one of their slap back presets, the long reverb, which is just, uh, I believe we used Pro R on this, but let me see, we might have used verb suite. We did use Pro R, I tried out the lexicon, didn't love it for this. So it's just a vocal hall preset on that. And then the stereo vox delay, which is just repeater. We've done tons of videos on vocal chains and stuff like that. So it's the same kind of five secret sauces that I send every vocal to. So we did that processing on the main vocals and then we have these delay throws right here. So same chain as the normal vocal, we just went ahead and added repeater on 100% wet. And we went ahead and added some extra reverb and EQ. So we have a halftime delay there that we do on a couple phrases, and then we have a quarter note delay that we do on a couple phrases. And I can feel you fading fast, but I keep noticing that we've been both on different tracks, but I... So I'm just doing that, and then we have this low delay throw that we've pitched to the right. We've pitched down uh, 12 semitones and uh, pan to the right. So wrong, can you tell me? And then we did the same thing where I tuned this up 12 semitones in Cubase, and then also tuned it up 12 semitones in Auto-Tune. So this one's up two octaves, this one's down one octave, and they're both just kind of crushed and reverbed. So we have this. So no, where it all went so wrong, can you tell me? And that's really all we did for the delays uh, in the song. We just kind of use them sparingly on different words and phrases. And then for the chorus, I wanted a little bit more body and depth. So I added this big chorusy reverb. It's just one of the cathedral set to 100% wet, just so I could carve it out and get that space exactly how I wanted. So it sounds like that over this main vocal. feels a little dry and out of place without that so I just added that and then of course we automated it up a little bit um, in the second chorus because we're gonna have those drums come in last vocal thing that we did which we have entire videos on on the channel so I'm not gonna cover it too much but I just added a vocoder in this pre-chorus and in this chorus can we take back what was never spoken can we then we have the same thing back here. And that is everything that I'm gonna add to this. So we're gonna call that done. If you want, I'll play the whole song so you can actually kind of hear it right now. So let's go ahead and play it from the start. Remember that night back in Brooklyn Across the bar caught by surprise when you looked in my eyes and came over we drained to the place kicked us both out you offered to come back to my house we stayed up till we watched the sun slowly creep it was october now it's been seven months and i can feel
And there you have it. There's how to make a pop ballad from start to finish. It's really just focusing on getting a nice piano sound or an acoustic guitar sound, whatever is going to be that main element. And then just kind of supplementing that with things that are going to add nice little counter melodies, things gonna, that are going to add nice little textures. But remember, you want to keep these as simple as possible. At the core, the song really only has a couple elements. It's got that main piano. It's got that acoustic guitar that kind of goes throughout the whole thing. And it's got the bass and the drums. Everything else, like those little kind of acoustic harmonics or um, those extra little pads, those are all just textures and layers, but they're not really adding any kind of counter melody or extra rhythm or anything like that. So when you're working on a song like this, remember to keep the production as simple as possible to get your idea across. And then when you're working on the lyrics, try to make it as specific and storytelling as possible because that tends to captivate the listeners a little bit more than just diving into general feelings about love or hurt or pain or anything like that. So if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. I really appreciate you watching the video, especially if you're to this point. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe and turn on our channel notifications so you get notified every Friday when we release one of these videos. But other than that, that's going to be it. We will see you guys next week. Let us know what you want to see in the meantime and stay safe. Much love everybody and peace out.